Hello, and uh, thank you for allowing me to be uh, part of your documentary on ASMR. You know, spreading the word on the benefits that ASMR has is something that I think can benefit many, many people. So, okay, I'm ready to be part of that. Okay, questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, my name is Dimitri. I live on the Gold Coast in the state of Queensland in Australia. Pretty much further away than practically everybody else in the world. Um, so, part of my history of ASMR goes back to my childhood and um, thinking and, and, and experiencing this tingling sensation that was really strong and it has a very big impact on your life because it's something that it 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 gives you something that you don't quite understand and um you know when i was young i can remember experiencing it but i don't quite i didn't have much of an understanding on on what it was i kind of thought i was or not I, but I thought it was something special, almost like it was like a little magical effect that only I could feel or um, almost like it was accessing like a higher part of myself, you know, you know, sometimes we like to live in a, a little bit of a fantasy world and ASMR kind of did that for me when I was young. Okay, so the story of when I first got into ASMR, I think would have to be two memories. And that was uh, a cousin of mine and the way that he would talk about subjects and things would, um, and the, the uh, sound of his voice would, um, I, I just found very, very relaxing. And the way that he would passionately talk about things that he was, um, you know, he was involved with and he was creating and building um, would, would trigger my ASMR and I could sit and listen to him for hours if, you know, if I could. And so, you know, it was, his voice was one of the first voices that would, would regularly give me ASMR. And also, there was a lady on a TV shopping network and uh, I don't know what her name was. And I could sit and listen to her for hours because the way that she would describe things and talk about things and she would uh, accentuate certain letters and uh, sounds, it would um, allow me to, to experience ASMR. And it was then that I realized that ASMR could be triggered not on demand but on a certain set of what we refer to as triggers that would allow us to um, experience ASMR. Now, so you know that led me down a pathway of realizing that I could look for little things that people might do or, or the sounds that they would make that I could visually pick up on them quite quickly and and experience ASMR in a variety of different real world locations and that and that is you know the the basis of of the content that I create today is trying to replicate some of those real world unintentional moments that allow me to experience ASMR and I try and share that with other people. Okay, All right, so how do I feel when I listen to ASMR? Well, it's, you know, for me, purely there's a, you know, I'm, I'm looking for that sensation that allows you to feel uh, the, the tingling sensation of ASMR because it feels very nice. So, 
you know, when I'm watching content, I try not to look for it. I just kind of let it be there and try and let ASMR kind of find me in the, you know, so that I may experience it. So, you know, I, I know what my triggers are and I look for content and sometimes the best times is when you find something that you don't quite expect it to be and it allows you to experience ASMR. Um, so I feel a tingling sensation starting in my scalp and it goes all the way down the back of my neck and it feels quite good. Um, I don't feel it too much in my body. It's mostly my, my scalp area that I feel it. Um, and emotionally, I think it brings an instant calmness to my body, to my mind, and it allows kind of like a grounding where, you know, if you are kind of thinking about this and thinking about that, it allows you to sort of center your thoughts a little bit and it allows you to actually stop thinking and just sort of focus on yourself. Okay, so, well, it's hard to describe it, but it's it's not something that you might smell or taste. You know, sometimes when you smell something, it can bring a memory back, um, like a kind of like a deja vu moment. But it's it's kind of like I I kind of refer to what it might look like. It's like a like a cascading of kind of like um, ripples of water going over your your brain and, and the tingle comes in like waves and it starts from the top and it goes down and it starts in the top and goes down and it's kind of like you know feeling waves of kind of like water but it's almost like just those tingling sensations going over your body and when it gets strong it sort of radiates out and then comes down and then radiates out and comes down and when you see just those little things that someone might be doing those are those little things that start that little cascading down it's those little triggers that you might um, visually see with your eyes and your ears that the brain then allows that that cascading motion of the tingling sensation moving down your scalp okay so what are my preferences um, well I find that I have a very varied uh, interest in the type of things that can help me to to feel that cascading motion and so the best thing for me is is a real world situation and I find um, direct physical contact not um, intimacy that I'm referring to, but like physical contact, like for me. Like I like just the, you know, gently running fingers over the hands. And, you know, it sometimes feels good when someone's just touching you lightly. Um, like, for example, when you're getting a massage, the person might be putting their hand on you and walking around you. You know, that is the type of moment that might allow you to feel that like slight tingling sensation. Um, you know, so I really like watching massage and, um, I, I, I like watching people or I like watching the person focusing on the other person. And when I see those light little touches, it triggers little memories in me on, on these moments of when I experienced ASMR and it, and it helps me when I visually see someone just getting lightly touched as they're being massaged or just gently massaged well it looks like it's gently massaged those are those little things that um, allow me to experience ASMR okay what is the difference between ASMR videos and sounds on their own so for me you know a video is is very important because it gives you that visual uh, aspect of of picking up on those little triggers but for me i think a good asmr video allows you to sort of gently 
as you're experiencing the cascading effect is close your eyes and you can still experience and you kind of start to visualize a little bit and it kind of blends in and allows you to kind of visualize visual triggers with the sounds that you're hearing and it's that's where the the binaural effect of the sounds moving around you help to kind of make you sort of feel a bit more immersed and and allows imagination to take over um, and so I enjoy both and it's not one or the other that is a, a preference I think you'll find that most people will have the preference of of being able just to find something that allows them to experience ASMR so everybody's different some people may not experience it until they close their eyes some people um, might you know might need to open their eyes to experience it. it's like there's always going to be people but I, I believe that something that's effective can work both with your eyes closed and your eyes open okay so how's ASMR affected my life well the main way that it's affected my life is is really my my son's life so um, a number of years ago he was diagnosed as being um, ASD and it's uh, quite a debilitating effect that it can have and so it just so happened the time I was able to to start spending more time at home was when that happened and so ASMR had a big effect on my life to actually give me more time to spend with my son to help him have the best possible outcome um, and so you know I've been lucky that he has been able to achieve that and so the other part of ASMR is just being a tool like I, I refer to ASMR as a tool that you can use and it's almost like ASMR when you're experiencing it you know the effect that goes through your body it seems to sort of flow through and go to the parts of you that, that need it most whether it's just simple relaxation helping you to sort of switch off for a little while you know stop thinking helping you go to sleep you know it it starts a whole lot of positive things for you and so for me many years i would look at videos online just to experience a tingling sensation because it's quite enjoyable <sighs> so why did i choose to become an asmr artist well when i did it there was no such thing as asmr artist and I enjoyed watching massage videos. And so I enjoyed watching people, you know, getting massage and receiving it. But the problem I found is that whenever I'd find one video I liked, the YouTube channel wouldn't have any more. Um, there was one channel online that did. Um, but, you know, there just wasn't really anything available for that. So it was my intention to record some massage videos because I was quite confident in giving massage and I didn't ever plan to talk on the videos I just wanted to just do just simple massage videos and then funny things started happening I started getting things called subscribers which I didn't really quite understand I started getting people commenting on videos and then they started asking for things and I was like okay and so I thought I'll oh, And then they suggested talking, and so I started talking. Um, and at that point in time, I was just using like a Sony HDV camera with its basic internal microphones. And um, I was working in IT, and I had a friend of mine that I would do his computer work for him, and he had a, a recording studio. And I would quite regularly go to his house and just have a chat. And I said to him, you know, if I was to, you know, try and record better quality audio what would be involved you know what would you recommend 
and he always had his audio engineering magazines and he went back a couple of issues and he flipped through and he says that that's what you'd want and it was a, a zoom h4n recorder and he said you can plug your professional condenser mics into that and um, you can record and i said oh that's great and so on his computer i um, went onto amazon's web page um, just to see how much it would cost and um and to see how much it would cost to ship and so I went into Amazon on his computer. I logged into my account so I could get a, a freight charge. And something happened. I clicked the button and all of a sudden it said, congratulations and thank you for purchasing this Zoom H4n recorder. And, you know, back then, 270 or $300 was a lot of money. And I felt a little bit um, sick. Not like bad sick, you know, like... Uh, I didn't mean to do that. I just spent $300 on something. And then a few moments later, I just sort of just let it go. I thought, you know, things happen. There's no point in trying to contact them and stop it. I thought, let's try it out and see what happens. So my uh, mate gave me a couple of Rode NT5 microphones. And um, I must have got a couple of stands from somewhere, microphone stands. And then I went into a walk-in wardrobe, closed all the doors, set up with the Zoom recorder, the Sony camera, and I started recording videos in a walk-in wardrobe. And um, I effectively made the world's first ASMR audio recording studio. And that's kind of like one of my stories that's led me down this pathway to where I am now, where I'm in a, a larger room, which I've built my own purpose-built soundproof room to record ASMR because the, the recordings are so quiet, you know. Uh, it helps to be able to turn the, the volume level up in the recording. Sorry, I, I kind of waffled on a little bit there. So, yeah, mainly it was just a, a series of, like... um it wasn't really intentional, but then, you know, things started to move very quickly and I started producing a lot of content and um, it it helped me uh, to, to step away a little bit from full-time work and spend more time with my son, which has been the greatest gift that ASMR has given to me. Everybody's different and, and how it might affect them. All right. How do I decide what to put into my videos? Well, you know, I always have a, like a little saying that you you try not to try. And so ASMR is a little bit elusive. It's kind of hard to get a hold of. And sometimes, you know, if you try too much or you try looking for it too much, it doesn't quite work. So with my videos, I try and think of, of ways... And things I can do to mimic experiences that I've had where I've felt really good unintentional ASMR in moments of my life. And I try and put these into the videos. And that's some of the things that I do to do it. But, you know, one of the things I did early on was I created a varied, a very wide range of different videos. Um, and that catered to a lot of people's interests. And so I think, you know, talking, no talking, role plays, massage. So I had a wide range of videos. And so, um, you know, I tried to use every single possible interaction that's allowed me to experience ASMR. And I've tried to put them all into the videos. And sometimes I put multiple things into videos. So... As people are watching the video, you know, while one person might pick up on something here, by the time my hand gets to here, they're picking up on something here. And when I'm doing something different, and then I come back and I start that cascading effect for those three different people that are seeing slightly different variations in the visual triggers that I might be giving them. And so I try and create something that, that can touch on many different people is... One of the things I try to work towards. All right, so 
how has my experience with ASMR changed since becoming? So for me, um, when I watch videos, because I've created videos, I kind of have the thoughts in the back of my mind that, you know, they're creating videos to for ASMR. And, and while it can be very effective for me, sometimes my mind wanders and I think about things and, and it's sometimes not as effective as what it should be. Whereas, you know, if I go looking for unintentional videos, people getting a massage, I know that there's no intention for me to experience ASMR and it, it allows me to sort of experience it more. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, it has definitely changed and there's also something referred to as ASMR immunity where the the more you look for it or the more you experience it, you know, the the less you actually experience it and sometimes you just need to take a break. And when you come back, you know, you don't don't look for it and try and find which video is going to give me ASMR. Kind of settle on a couple of different videos and just enjoy them and try not to think about it too much because it kind of you can become your own worst enemy trying to experience ASMR sometimes. Okay, so how do I feel when I make these videos and how do I feel when editing and listening to them? So sometimes when I'm making the videos, I kind of feel like I'm touching onto something that's connecting with the people watching and I try and sort of like hold that connection in and then I kind of try and move it around and and bring it into the video and somehow the video seems to record me doing something that is is not visible that is it's touching on somebody and that's where the the hand movements and the reiki style videos come into it there's there's almost something unseen that that people can somehow visually pick up on but there's nothing visual to see um, and so sometimes that's that's what I feel when I record the videos and I try and like hold on to it as much as I can and try and sort of like send it to the people it's kind of like a, a, a Reiki so it's my intent to try and create a tool that can help people if the simple way to help is just to help them relax go to sleep um, when I'm listening to my own videos um, it would be very common that they would put me to sleep if I'm watching them and sometimes while I'm playing the, them along the timeline of the editing software and it's late at night sometimes I would literally just lie back close my eyes and um, most of the time they would put me into like a, a sleep sort of um, uh, motion like you know like I start going into sleep and so I just forget about editing it and I just relax or switch off and I just allow the sounds and that's mostly the sounds but sometimes, just sometimes um, my own content and and I can actually trigger myself and trigger ASMR in myself and it's kind of rare but it does happen sometimes I get really excited when that happens and then, and then ASMR floats away because I'm getting all excited and I'm thinking, wow, I'm triggering ASMR in myself but then I lose it but, you know, I know it was there. Okay. So, what is my relationship with the artists that I listen to? Well, how do I think of them? You know, when you listen to someone and watch them, you know, you unknowingly pick up some of their mannerisms and you feel close to them. And, you know, part of that, intimacy not intimacy is in like a, a relationship type of thing but it's more like for example getting a massage you know someone cutting your hair you know that person is focusing on you and so you allow that connection between the two people to kind of it builds on kind of like a a relationship where you start to get to know the person and you feel are relaxed when you're in their presence when you're watching their video 
and that's probably a really good thing and so it's it's strange you know and you know some people uh, there's all different ways that you kind of interact but I try not to let things get or go down any sort of pathways. I just kind of enjoy and and I feel relaxed being or watching their video. All right, so what is my relationship to my listeners um, and how do you think of them? Well, you know, I, I create something for people and... And there's an interaction between the people and it benefits us both ways in a number of different ways. Um, but it's always been my intention to to be able to create something that people can use as a tool to kind of find something in themselves, um, kind of like a... It's like a place in yourself where you can go and you know that you're safe. You know there's no danger. You know that there's like a friend there for you that's going to kind of like reassure you, hold your hand. And, and it kind of, it, it does create kind of like a, a bond that, you know, what it is is I'm creating a space, a personal space for every single person that watches the videos that they can take something out of it, you know, they can use it to find some benefit, even if it's something as simple as relaxation and sleep. And I, you know, to be honest, I try and distance myself a little bit from the listeners because I don't want to get too involved in too many things, you know, I'm a little bit old, I, I kind of, I've been dealing with the whole um, internet thing for a long time, and I think it's healthy to have a distance and and not to be affected too much by words that are said, um, because these days, you know, words are said that create emotions and feelings. Um, when I was growing up in the old days, you know, the saying was, sticks and stones don't break your, no, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. Well, it seems that as we've gotten older, it's kind of rotated where sticks and stones will hurt you, but they'll hurt you less now than what words can, okay? And when, and now when, you know, words can be amplified by thousands, millions of people, you know, the effect is, is is really huge. And now I think you'd rather get a broken bone than, you know, some of the things that happen that can negatively impact someone through the online world. So I'm not sure exactly where I'm going with that, but, uh, you know, words and emotion are a very, very powerful thing. And... You know, I just try and give my listeners something that that allows them to, you know, disconnect from some of the things that we experience in our real life. Sorry. So, all right. So, ASMR is often an intimate exchange. From caretaker role play to the experience of looking straight at the viewer, how do I feel about the intimacy? Well, I... I create an intent and I, when I'm talking to someone, because right now I'm talking to you, and even though there's a camera in front of me, there's not. There's, there's thousands of different people that are here now with me. And it's almost time, you know, the word relative doesn't really work in this situation for me because I don't quite understand it, but time acts differently than what we think, I think. And that, you know, the person that is watching this in the future, 
I can experience what it is that they're watching and I can try and touch on it is kind of part of the intent of me like imagining that the people are here now in the future while they're watching this in the future I'm recording it now but I kind of imagined that they're here and so that time kind of bends around my thoughts and I and my intentions to create something that's going to possibly have an impact and a benefit on somebody in the future but that future is happening now a little confusing isn't it anyway um, you know the intimacy that I create is is part of ASMR I understand the intimacy of of not being disturbed while you're watching content or listening to sounds to help you to relax because I've been there I've done that when I was uh, a teenager I'd be you know hiding in the house hoping no one would see me watching the TV shopping network while I was experiencing ASMR you know when the house was empty I knew I felt safe and you know feeling safe is part of the intimacy that we create as ASMR content creators. Um, so for me, it definitely enhances the situation, but it's not necessary. ASMR can happen in, in so many different instances. Um, why do I think it's such a staple of ASMR? I think it's... It's one of the core parts of ASMR is, is when somebody is focusing on you. It, it lends to the visual and audible and the presence triggers of someone just moving around you, you know, as you're getting a massage. They put their hand on you as they move around your body. And, and this is a, a big core part of ASMR is kind of like a, a little bit of not intimacy but you know someone focusing on you shutting out the rest of the world for a moment and just enjoying the situation and and finding those visual triggers those audible triggers especially in real world situations all right so for me um intimacy and privacy so asmr in my life it's something i tend not to have much to do with my my life around me um it doesn't really influence many relationships um you know i would dream of you know having a a, a partner that you know experienced asmr and and you know to be that but i haven't got that at this point in time but you know it would be wonderful if if all of our partners family understood asmr and were more open and willing to to do it so like i've been in groups of people where they're more um open and aware you know let's go like the the hippie community where people are very happy and loving to each other where you know i can i can go to these people and i've done this and i've talked to them at asmr and then we start doing asmr stuff on each other and i've had rooms of people where they're you know running hands over arms and you know hair and things like that and that is some of the most beautiful moments of, of asmr and and trying to take it out of being private and make it a bit more uh, public and known and seen by people and when people start seeing people do these things they want to be a part of it because they can see that it's nice and it's good you know and if the rest of the world did this uh, you know there would be a lot less conflict um so for any additional thoughts you know it's um a theory that was put to me by a very special person um, that ASMR is something that activates part of your nervous system that just relaxes you. It's simple as that. I believe that's the physiological nature of ASMR, that it's activating the parasympathetic nervous system, just flushing out any stress and just, just stuff in your body that you don't want. Thank you.